All right, hey guys, I think I got the, the sound more or less fixed. So hopefully you guys will be able to hear me this time and uh, back out in the garage. So not the most conducive uh, filming environment, especially for uh, something with as, as broad of a spread as this is gonna be. All right, so I apologize if, uh, if I'm getting in your way or if this stuff doesn't check out quite right uh, for sound or whatnot. I'm just trying to get back out there and do something, okay? So uh, what I wanted to do today is take a look at uh, some of the vests that Cry uh, Precision offers, the, uh, the AVS and the family of JPCs. All right, I'm not so concerned with the CPC. If you want a CPC, you know what that's about. And, uh, you know, do, do what makes you happy. All right, but that I've I had one for a little while. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Uh, I didn't like being locked into that much bulk. All right, so again, we're looking at the AVS and some of the capabilities it brings, and then we are looking at the JPC family and uh, kind of the differences there. There seems to be a lot of misunderstandings out there, and I wanted to try to clear the air a little bit and uh, hopefully answer some questions for some people and uh, just kind of explain the differences here. Cry does a great job. If you go to their website, uh, they have plenty of information at the surface. And then once you open up the uh, owner's manuals or the spec sheets or whatever tab they call that, uh, it answers all of the questions. But uh, sometimes people uh, just don't want to go out there and do that. And it's, it's a little bit easier to, to show people up front. All right. So again, we're going to look at the ABS and we're going to look at the JPCs and uh, hopefully explain the differences between all of them and make the platforms a little bit easier to understand. All right, so I think the best place to start uh, looking at this video is the JPC 1.0, all right, the original JPC. Uh, these are still uh, very relevant vests to a point, all right? If you own a JPC-1, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you don't have to upgrade to the new hotness, the SPC or the 2.0. Uh, if you don't have a JPC or a cry vest yet, I don't necessarily know if that's the way to go because there's not really a cost savings there. Uh, you might as well go ahead and get the SPC or the 2.0, all right? And uh, this isn't the best example of a uh, JPC-1 because it's, not even remotely stock anymore. Uh, it's kind of my experimental vest, all right? So uh, the biggest thing with the one, all right, if you, if you buy one stock, is it comes with a front flap that's sewn on. I cut mine off uh, so I could use placards, uh, but there's a sewn on front flap, which is a three mag uh, kangaroo pouch. All right, it's gonna come with some little round Velcro circles as well. Those are not to make the mags stick in there better, all right? If anybody tells you that, just ignore them uh, and probably throw those things away because you don't need them, all right? Uh, but it comes with a three mag uh, kangaroo panel. There is an admin pocket up top, all right? That is secured with Velcro and it has some uh, elastic retention in there, all right? The back panel, which I don't have on this one anymore, is uh, straight molly. All right, and it comes with the Cry three band uh, cummerbund. All right, which is going to look a lot like this with their uh, their reinforced material inside of it. Right, this is an aftermarket cummerbund from A uh, and A Tactical. All right, but it's going to have this this three band skeletal cummerbund on it that runs all the way up and then secures under the flap. All right, you can kind of see it under here. If you had a back panel on here. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't be able to see it from this at angle, but the cummerbund secures in the back with the bungee cord, which you can see right there. You weave through the back plate and the cummerbund, and uh, that's all you got going on there. All right, so that is the 1.0. Uh, also, some people will point out that the 1.0 had the least stretchy plate bags. All right, it's got stretch material on the sides with some quarter in the middle, a little bit of 3D spacer, me spacer mesh up top. Uh, no matter what anybody says, Cry's been doing this for a while and they kind of know what they're talking about. If you have a medium JPC, it will fit medium e-sappies with Kevlar backers, all right? Don't let anybody convince you that it won't. You don't need to size up. 
Cry didn't make the wrong size plate bags. You will have to work a little bit to get it in there, but it'll fit medium yeast sappies with a Kevlar backer, All right? If you get into something like a civilian cut sappies, which are a little bit off, all right, I've got a medium one in here. It fit fine. You just have to work at it a little bit to get it in there. I would not try going up a size and trying to fit a large into a medium or a medium into a small because then you're going to start splitting the seams on here. And if you have large plates, just buy a large plate carrier, right? The plate carrier size doesn't change. You already have the plates, buy the plate carrier that fits the size. All right, so now that we've talked about the JPC-1, we can talk about the JPC-2.0. All right, so the 2.0 came out, uh, obviously after the JPC-1 existed, uh, but the AVS was also out there. So this kind of bridged the gap between the two. It made the JPC a little bit more modular and adaptable uh, while keeping the same streamlined shape as the original JPC and uh, avoiding a little bit of the bulk that comes with the AVS system. All right, so what does that get you? Well, uh, for starters, you get uh, AVS front flap capability. All right, so there's a couple AVS front flaps out there. There's the triple flapped pouch. There's the triple kangaroo pouch, which should be shown up on camera there. And then there's a straight uh, molly pouch. All right, so basically this without the, the internal mag pouches. All right, so if you're not familiar with the AVS uh, attachment system, uh, hit up my placard video. That breaks it down really well. Uh, but just for a recap, you basically have some uh, Velcro-backed Molly strips that run uh, internal of this band and then into this Velcro-lined uh, kangaroo pocket. All right, this is not like a London Bridge kangaroo pocket or any other kangaroo pocket out there. I think Velocity Systems uses it on the Scarab. All right, this is not meant to store anything of substance. All right, it's only meant for those straps. If you're running a placard on here that doesn't use the ABS system, you can get like a small fixed blade in there or something uh, that works fine, but you're probably not going to get mag pouches in there. All right. Uh, so that is the AVS front flap. Another addition is the quick doff uh, capability. So on the cummerbund portion, you have these kind of goofy uh, nylon uh, strips here where you leave the little pull handle hanging out so it's exposed under your flap. And then if you need to, uh, with the flap down, you just pull that really hard and it flips the Velcro and off comes your cummerbund. All right. It also has quick doff on the shoulder straps, which are these little T-handles here. When you pull those, again, it flips the Velcro inside out on itself and undoes your shoulder straps. All right, if you have any kind of comms wires going over there, hydration, whatever, uh, it kind of negates that capability. So hopefully you're pulling the opposite shoulder uh, or you just don't need it in the first place. All right, I don't know how well that works because uh, it's not something I do. All right, uh, since we have the AVS front flap on here, uh, which is removable without cutting it off. Uh, Cry also gives you some built-in uh, placard capability via Swift Clips. All right, so you can throw your, your repair buckle on there and then you can mount your, you know, Spirit System Micro Flight or some of the velocity panels or, or whatever you want on there using Swift Clips. All right, again, going back to my placard video, I don't know for sure if I have tried this with G-hooks if I said I did in the video, I did, but it was only for funsies to see if it would work. I don't recommend using G hooks on the Cry platform unless you really, really, really want to use the uh, the Faro panels. All right, but most of the Faro panels can be duplicated with with some other option that plays better with the JPC. All right, if you put G hooks on here, your ride height's going to be completely screwed up, and you're going to have a goofy setup on there. All right. Uh, the 2.0 still retains the exact same admin pocket. I happen to have an aftermarket uh, zipper opening on here. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the company that it's from. Uh, but basically, uh, if you want this capability, Axel 
are the guys that are making it now. All right. Uh, I want to give credit where credit's due. I'll put a link in the uh, description because I'm going to butcher the name of the company if I try to. All right. Uh, so you still have the admin pocket. You've got quick, quick doff, uh, shoulder straps and cummerbund and AVS front flap. All right. Uh, you still have the skeletal cummerbund, which you can kind of see right here. And it continues around the back. Might be a little easier to see there. Uh, and then we have the back plate so I can show you how a JPC cummerbund attaches. All right. I have the side soft armor panels, the big long nine by six ones on here which uh, surprisingly eat up a whole bunch of cummerbund, all right? So if you're at all getting close to the limits on your cummerbund without it, uh, you're gonna have to bump up a size if you throw that armor on there, all right? So without armor, I'm meeting in the middle. Uh, with armor on there, I'm all the way extended, all right? Uh, so looking at the JPC back panel, one thing of note here is if you're planning on putting a large pouch on here, or uh, a hydration sleeve and then maybe uh, a strip charge pouch or something like that keep in mind that where the cummerbund meets the vest you're basically losing that outer strip of molly so you've got six wide up top and four wide on the bottom if you need uh, six wide all the way across your best bet is to get a molly zip on panel on here all right uh, speaking of that the 2.0 adds the capability of zip on panels all right, so Cry has its own line of panels. You've got straight Molly, you've got the pack, which I have a video on, There's and there's a couple different generations of that, and then you've got the assault panel. I've never tried the assault panel, so I don't know how that how that plays or what, what it's capable of, okay? Uh, but you have the zip-on capability. The panels are sized, so keep that in mind. If you have a medium uh, JPC, buy a medium panel. Uh, there's supposedly a little bit of play, but just play it safe unless you're getting it used. All right. I can only verify that the appropriate size panel fits the appropriate size vest. All right. The uh, 2.0 is a little bit different on the inside. All right. So you have slightly different stretch material here. It's got a lot more uh, cordura in the middle. But again, a medium-sized JPC will fit medium-sized plates with a Kevlar backer, all right? Cry did not build these the wrong size. If you're worried about your plate carrier not fitting you, don't change the plate size, change the cummerbund size, all right? These are sized to go around your body. These are sized to fit your plate, all right? If you have medium plates and you weigh 400 pounds, you still need a medium plate carrier to fit those plates. All right, so that is the JPC 2.0. All right, now the, uh, the newest release in the JPC family, which may or may not classify a JPC family depending on how you look at it, is the structured plate carrier, the SPC, all right? This is also uh, the newest version of the Airlight line. I never tried the old Airlight carriers. Uh, they really didn't do anything for me. This, in my opinion, is more of a JPC than an Airlight, even though it has the same build, all right? So uh, Grand Thumb just did a video on the SPC, and he covered uh, more or less all of the items of concern on this thing. Uh, however, there are two points uh, that I want to make about this thing. Uh, and then real quick, we'll go over it. So first you lose the, uh, the admin pocket there. All right. So if that's something that you really like, I happen to be a fan of it. The SPC may not be for you because of that. All right. The other thing is, uh, this does not come with a cummerbund from cry. Everything else more or less comes complete. This one, you have to buy the cummerbund separate. If you're on a budget, and you had a, a JPC before, you don't have to get the cummerbund right away. All of your old cummerbunds will still work. However, you miss out on the structured capability. All right, if you go with basically anything aftermarket at this point in time, you're missing out on that capability as well. I don't think anybody else makes a structured cummerbund yet. All right, but that might be changing. Uh, again, it takes uh, AVS front panels. All right. 
This one happens to be Molly, and then I just have a 10 speed pouch on there. You can use the triple kangaroo, you can use the flat, the straight Molly, uh, or the Airlight specific Molly. All right. Uh, the quick release is much improved over the 2.0 as far as functionality goes, and then just overall fitment. And then another, the other, the second concern that I wanted to bring up is all of your aftermarket uh, radio pouches and everything like that that you had from before will not play with the SPC. So you'll notice this is your securing flap and then you have the structured flap that feeds into the front plate bag. So you have to have a radio pocket or a, a side pocket, whatever you want to call this thing, that has a cutout for that structured piece to go through. So this is the Axle Advanced B-Wing. That allows for that, and then it gives you a Molly platform if you had a radio pouch you really wanted to, to use or a single magazine pouch that you wanted internal or something like that. And then on this side, we have the uh, the Cry Airlight radio pouch, which I have a video on and is phenomenal whether you have an SPC or not. I highly recommend those. All right, so there's your, your flap, and it feeds in right there. And that's what locks everything down and gives you that structured capability. All right, looking at the back, Pry has a sweet feature that they added on here to try to help with armor fitment. Uh, typically, your Molly cummerbund or your, your skeletal cummerbund runs through the, uh, the plate pocket itself. However, on the SPC, Cry gave you these two little tabs uh, that hang down below the plate bag. This is actually the bottom of the plate bag to try to raise that back plate up uh, by having the cummerbund run lower through the back plate than it does on the front. All right, most of the people that I've talked to that have used this thing, and myself included, prefer it on this bottom tab. All right, the cummerbunds that work with the SPC, the structured cummerbund, are huge compared to the other Cry cummerbunds. And I think the reason why they did that is they wanted more overlap uh, so that you're tying your cummerbund off in two points or running it through both of these tabs. So instead of having just one pivot point for the cummerbund, uh, it's more locked in and you've got two points of contact, so it's coming straight out of there. That's my theory. I might be totally wrong, but uh, don't go straight off the sizing chart if you're getting these cummerbunds. Any normal size human being probably wants the small. All right, this is a small and I'm not necessarily a small guy. Uh, and I still have all of the overlap I need. All right. The uh, structured cummerbund is also compatible with ABS slide-on pockets. All right, so if you had ABS uh, embitter pockets or the side plate pockets, uh, it's pretty slick. They slide right onto this thing, and uh, you can kind of figure out where you want them. And then when I was using this, uh, I had a, a tourniquet pocket or a molly pocket on either side uh, just to kind of lock everything down so it wasn't moving all over the place. Okay. I do think that there is a, uh, a steeper curve for comfort on the SPC. Uh, I love the, uh, the way it works and the way it functions and everything. I don't think it fits me as good as a, a traditional JPC. Other people think this is significantly more comfortable. It definitely carries the weight better, but as far as how it, how it actually fits me, I'm not 100% sold on it yet, even though the capability is absolutely there. Right. And then the last thing on this is by far, the SPC has the most uh, forgiving plate pockets as far as fitment. All right, where I struggled to get this uh, this medium uh, civilian cut sappy into the 1.0 or the 2.0, uh, it slid right into this one, even though it's still a medium, and there is plenty of room here for a Kevlar backer if I needed one on this plate. East sappies with Kevlar backers fit in here just fine. All right, and then it's got the whole 3D spacer, spacer mesh and true uh, elastic on the sides. So the, the tweeve that's on the, the 1.0 and the 2.0 uh, gives you some stretch. This gives you significantly more stretch, not to the point of being uh, sloppy, but it's, it's much, much more forgiving when trying to put your plates in there.
right? So that is the SPC in a nutshell. You do have these little hangers here. Uh, I don't recommend those for side release buckles because your, your height's all goofy. If you're getting an SPC, I highly recommend you get uh, AVS panels or possibly use the, uh, the axle adapters. Do not run side release buckles right off of this. Real quick plug uh, with respect to the JPC family, the same way that you can uh, use the AVS 1000 as a rear plate bag for the AVS, you can also do that for the JPC family to include the SPC. I will say I have not tried it on the SPC, so I don't know if you could use the structured cummerbund to its full effect with the AVS uh, 1000 pack on the back but it does mount up just the same way as it would on the AVS if you're trying to do a plate bag substitute. All right, moving on to the AVS side of the family, there's uh, two normal ways that you can use this. You can use the, uh, the AVS plate bags as a plate carrier, uh, or you can get the full harness system as we have over here. If you're starting from scratch and uh, you have no intention on buying the harness system, I do not recommend the AVS plate bags as a standalone plate carrier. It's not as comfortable, it doesn't fit well, and it's significantly more expensive. Just go with a 2.0 or an SPC or even a 1.0, right? These as a plate carrier are not ideal. If you're using it as a stepping stone and you plan on buying the harness later on, that's something to look at, but I would even recommend just getting a JPC and starting there because they hold their resale so value so well that as long as you don't destroy it, uh, once you have enough money saved up to bump up to the harness system, just sell your JPC and then get the plate bags and harness at the same time. This is really not a great uh, plate carrier in terms of comfort. All right, so we'll look at the, uh, the plate bag configuration first, and then we'll move on to the full harness system. All right, so looking at the plate bag configuration first here, uh, the AVS obviously takes AVS panels because they were designed for it. Uh, I had uh, a couple of different placards that I wanted to try out for some people. So I went ahead and upgraded to the, uh, the Axle Advanced uh, placard mount on here uh, just to get everything balanced out right. Plus I like that they, uh, they built in the, uh, the comms or, or hydration line or a cord routing uh, solution there. I just think it's a cleaner setup. Uh, Value-wise, people have debated me with, I don't necessarily know, that's up to you. All right, uh, I think it's worthwhile. Okay, so uh, AVS front panels on the AVS should make sense. You also have a pretty significant uh, admin pocket here because it's a little bit more of a, a rectangular plate bag than the JPC. Uh, it's still very minimalist. Uh, but it's it's squared off a little bit more on the top, so you've got a little bit wider admin pocket there. But it's basically just a bigger version of the JPC pocket. You still have uh, your elastic internal in there. Right. If uh, if the Velcro is annoying you on this one or the JPC for that matter, uh, a real cheap solution that I found is just get some uh, hook or some loop uh, Velcro and. Uh, put it on the hook portion, a couple little tabs in there, and it'll make it open up a lot easier and it won't close up on you quite as bad. Uh, it's a really easy poor man's solution to that, but the zippered adapters by far are, are the way to go on these. All right, the, uh, the JPC, or the, I'm sorry, the AVS, uh, when you do not have the harness, has fixed shoulder straps, all right? So there's not a buckle in there. Uh, when you do have the harness system, you put the buckle on there and then you have a, a quick release shoulder strap. And, and there's a chance I screwed that up, but I don't think you can use the buckle in the uh, standalone mode there. All right, the biggest issue with using the plate bags uh, by themselves is your cummerbund magically gets significantly smaller. All right, when it mounts to the harness system, you end up mounting a good bit further out and everything kind of fits the way it's supposed to. When you use it uh, in standalone mode, 
you have to run it just like you would the JPC and tie off in the middle. And it, it eats up a lot more cummerbund, so your sizing might be off. And then you also kind of contend with the comfort of the, uh, the shock cord internal on the vest there, which isn't isn't super painful, but it's also not ideal. All right, you can definitely feel it rubbing in there. You could use the pad system uh, to get a little bit of standoff there, uh, but then you're just adding costs uh, that you could be using towards your harness. All right. On the back of this thing, there is, again, the, uh, the zippered panel capability, uh, but you do have full use of all of your Molly because all of the cummerbund routing is either going to the harness or it's going internal on the plate bag there. All right, this uh, back panel happens to be from Grey Ghost. I think this is a, a good time to mention because uh, I haven't done a, a back panel, kind of universal back panel video. Cry back panels fit cry vests and only cry vests. Uh, there's a couple other manufacturers that are making cry compatible back panels. That would be uh, Grey Ghost like this. ATS also makes cry compatible back panels. I haven't tried those yet. And then uh, Molly Monkey makes uh, zipper adapters as well as uh, cry compatible back panels. All right, so if you have a, a JPC 1.0, and you want to use those, hit up uh, Molly Monkey and uh, get yourself some zipper adapters. All right. <clears throat> so that is the AVS in standalone mode. There's really not a whole lot to it. You still have some nice features, but you can get all of those same features on the 2.0 and have a more comfortable, better fitting uh, setup. Before I forget, I wanted to point something out on these uh, these Grey Ghost back panels. I don't know exactly what's going on, uh, but I found that these things zip on and zip off of the JPC uh, perfectly. Uh, no complaints at all about how that works. Once you switch to the AVS, uh, you kind of need to take the plate out, put the panel on, and then put the plate back in. Uh, not so much on the standard cut, but when you move to the MBEV cut, uh, which you'll see in a minute, it with the plate in the bag, it really doesn't want to go on. Uh, I'm not sure where that came from because this is the same size across the board, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't really play well. Uh, small AVS a little bit better. Medium AVS you really have to take the plate out of the bag to get the Grey Ghost panels on. And also the AVS plate bags, in my experience, are the least forgiving, even more so than the JPC-1. All right, so I do have uh, the appropriate size ESAPIs and Kevlar backers in here, and they fit. Uh, but you get the least uh, Velcro marriage with the AVS, in my experience. Uh, but it still fits what it's supposed to fit. All right. Now, moving on to the AVS with the harness. All right, so we'll wrap this up here. Hopefully I haven't gone too crazy long, uh, but we'll try to break this down. And I will openly admit that I don't know how to use, or I, I haven't used all of the features that the AVS with the harness uh, brings to bear. All right, so we already went over what the, the AVS does. All right, so we'll skip that. Uh, this one does have the Sabre Solutions uh, tubes adapters on it, so uh, that's not stock, even with the harness. All right. uh, but we'll open that up and we'll look at what the harness does for you. All right, so the harness, uh, you put your, your rear plate bag uh, outside, of the har or outside of the harness and it attaches there. And then your cummerbund ends up attaching to the harness here. So you can see uh, the cummerbund marries up a good bit further out, uh, which gives you a lot more cummerbund to work with. Granted, I have uh, side plates going on in here, so I'm still all the way extended, uh, but that's where the cummerbund marries up if you have the harness on. There's also the option of a three band, a two band, or a one band cummerbund on here. I've only had experience with the three band 
uh, but they basically all function the same. If you're using the one band, it's just a nylon strap and any side pouches that you want going on are purely on the harness itself. It's just to keep everything closed, all right? So the harness uh, pouches, and I don't know the full capabilities here, but the harness pouches have these uh, nylon straps here with a little bit of Velcro on them that marry up to the harness. So you just slide them on where you want, and then you press down that Velcro to kind of lock them in place. So in my instance, I have a side plate pocket and a uh, embitter pocket on the harness itself. And then your harness, when you're ready to secure it, pops into this little wing, uh, just like the structured cummerbund on the SPC. And then whatever outer cummerbund you're using goes over and secures everything in place. And this is what keeps the harness locked into position versus being kind of one piece like on the SPC. So again, if you just had the one band, it's just pump coming over and attaching just to hold this in place, all right? Uh, if you look at this, you can also permanently mount one side of your harness, which I have on the other side, by using this Velcro strip here. You open this up, thread it into the little, little loop here, and then close it back on itself and it locks it in place, all right? So we'll see that on this side, the harness doesn't come out because I have it permanently affixed. Right. If you're going to permanently affix the harness, you should make sure that you don't have your shoulder buckle on that side uh, because then you have done yourself no favors and you'll have a real hard time either getting into this thing or getting out, uh, depending on what you've done to yourself. Right. Uh, so that's how that works. If I didn't have the tubes adapters, I just lift the flap and uh, secure it like any other cummerbund flap. All right. Real quick, looking at the front of this thing. This is also the only uh, cry vest in this series that has uh, some vertical webbing there, uh, which you could use for some uh, sideways push to talk connections. I happen to have these, uh, these TA ones that have a vertical, uh, so I just use the top uh, loop here and then rubber band or shot corded in place as well, All right? You can see the uh, the the pack panel uh, fits on here just fine. Again, it's sized so if you have a medium uh, AVS, use your medium panels and everything will will work out. All right, so uh, kind of the the big thing with the harness is you get that better load bearing capability, and in theory, you can have two layers of pockets going on that aren't necessarily competing with themselves. So you can have side plates and radios internal. And then uh, something that I'm a big fan of is basically covering the outside with 10-speed uh, pouches. Granted, I don't have that done here, uh, but then they're not competing and you don't have to try to figure out how to get your 10-speeds on the side plate pockets or something like that. All right, the, uh, the AVS is uh, much better situated for putting all of the things on than any of the JPC options. Uh, one last area of comparison between the two platforms, the JPC and the AVS, is uh, if you are a fan of dangler type pouches, the JPC uh, off the shelf plays better with them. So the JPC the plate pocket secures at the rear of the plate, uh, which lets you put your, your dangler there, and then everything's kind of in a straight line. The AVS secures at the front, so it'll still play with dangler pouches. Just keep in mind that it's not, uh, it's mounted a little bit further forward, so you're gonna get a little bit more sway on it. Now, if you have something like the Shaw Concepts uh, Raid pouch that uses a tube connection, it, it stays a little bit more rigid. If you're using something like the, uh, the Tack Taylor uh, dangler here, it's gonna have a lot more flop uh, because it's already sitting so far off your body. So it's not a huge deal. It's just something to keep in mind if you're a fan of those pouches and you don't have either of these systems yet, that may steer you more towards the JPC side. 
Uh, so that wraps up the uh, AVS and JPC video. Uh, I want to leave you guys with one last consideration here with the SPC being as new as it is and uh, modifications or aftermarket parts still coming out for it. A lot of people have been uh, asking in various places for a tubes uh, compatible cummerbund for it. And while I'm not saying it can't work, I just want to show you this and it may not be the best idea. So if it's slow to come, I think this is kind of why. So because you have everything uh, one piece with the SPC, you need to thread this uh, black reinforced portion into the plate pocket. And then this goes under your flap. So kind of my concern with the tubes, uh, which need a vertical component to it, is once you have that in position, I don't know how you're going to slide the tubes up and down. All right, so maybe another buckle uh, that can come straight in might be an option. Uh, maybe somebody figures out how to do the tubes, uh, but if tubes are a, a, an important thing for you, I don't necessarily recommend the SPC right now uh, or just be prepared to live without them for a while because I don't necessarily know how uh, somebody's going to pull that off.